G'day viewers, welcome to another episode of Fishing Life. My name's Bill Harchorn and on today's show, we're gonna be fishing at Apollo Bay. Now you might be asking, Apollo Bay, that's not Apollo Bay. You are right, that is Melbourne behind us. I've just ducked out for a quick fish on the Yarra after work, but I got a phone call from a mate of mine, Daniel Kent. He said, come down Billy to Apollo Bay for the weekend, because I wanna take you to fish for some brown trout. Wouldn't tell me how we're actually gonna target the trout, but he said you'll have a ball and it'll be a great weekend. So come along for the ride. I'm gonna put the boat on the trailer. I'm gonna head down the highway to Apollo Bay. My name's Daniel Kent. This is my hometown of Apollo Bay. I've been fishing since I was five years old. When Dad hooked a trout and let me wind it in. But since then, I've been taking things more seriously. Taking fishing seriously would be an understatement. Daniel has successfully fished all over Australia and overseas, which is a far cry from that first brown trout he caught with his dad. This time of year I like to chase the trout in the rivers, on fly, up in the hills, or down lower on small hard body lures. I've got two different places we'll fish this weekend. They're totally different from each other. We'll start up in the hills in the small mountain stream at the top of the Air River, um, and we'll walk up to a waterfall chasing small brown trout on dry flies. And then after that we'll go for a short drive, not too far away, and the scenery is totally different. There's not a tree in sight, and the trout are much, much bigger. So what's the plan, Dan? What are we doing? Well, I think we'll head up to the um, air crossing here in the Otways and we'll walk up the Air River. And um, if we get a good day's walking in, we should end up around Hopeton Falls somewhere and we'll just flick a few little royal wolves or dry flies and hopefully we can get a nice trout rise up and take them. No worries, mate. By looking at that, I reckon I'm going to do a few Ks today. You'll probably do a few Ks <laughs> on the legs, but... It'll be all worth it. Uh, my wife said I need to lose a bit of weight, mate, so this <laughs> could work well. <laughs> The beauty of the Apollo Bay region is there are numerous small streams that make their way out of the mountains and all hold good populations of brown trout that are always eager to take a dry fly. As we head just 500 metres from the main road through some pretty muddy cow paddocks, we are greeted with the beautiful Air River and some pristine rainforest. All right, viewers, well, uh, Dan's brought us down to the Air River for a bit of fly fishing action. We've hiked across a big cow paddock and all of a sudden we've been uh, confronted with this beautiful river behind us. We're gonna try and use some dry flies. We've got the Royal Wolf here. What sort of trout are we going to try and come across here, Dan? Up in the rapids here, they're normally small brown trout. Yep. Um, it's a nice, bright, sunny day and noticed a few insects getting around, so I think the dry fly might be able to 
full of few into taking them off the surface. Beautiful. So behind us we've got sort of the first pool we're going to have a crack at and we're going to what we're just going to work those sort of bubble lines. Yeah, just the tops of the runs and the bottom of the rapids and then um, anywhere the bubble line comes down through the pool is a good area as well. Beautiful. And the reason we're standing a little bit away from the bank is we don't want to spook any fish that might be hanging there. So we're going to work our way up the Air River into some just absolutely beautiful, beautiful scenery and uh, hopefully we get a few trout along the way. So uh, come along with us, we'll see if we can get one for you. about as far as we can walk on the Air River, uh, had a few casts. The plan is to cross just here, but I don't think we're crossing here, are we Dan? No nah, mate, that's uh, way too much water coming down there. I think the recent rains have sort of swollen the river a little bit, so I think our only other option is to head further up dream into the headwaters and, and hope that it's not flowing so hard up in the hills. So we're going to do some bush bashing. Yeah, it takes a little bit of walk to get in there, but um, I think once we get there, we'll find that the water's a bit more settled and we should be able to get some fish on the dry flies, I think. And the big thing we've got to worry about is the uh, tiger snakes, is that right? There's a lot of snakes along this river and um, it's very common to come across a few, so I'd keep my eye out wherever you put your feet. And the great thing about being a guest viewers is that Dan has to walk first. <laughs> oh, I'll just follow his lead. <laughs> oh, I right. hate the things, mate. <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> While I was busy watching out for the deadly tiger snakes, thanks to Dan's advice, it seemed that in the blink of an eye the scenery changed from huge gum trees and blackberry bushes to a lush and thick rainforest. After half an hour of heavy hiking through the bush that made me realise I'm far from fit, we came across an untouched pool and quickly noticed a few brown trout rising. He's on. Yeah. Good work. Awesome stuff. So Dan has got one. He just took that nicely, Dan, eh? Yeah, he just sucked it right off the surface. That's fantastic. I'll just wind this up, get it out of the way. That's, that was my one, Dan. <laughs> Give you a turn. Look at that, that's awesome. Oh. So that's a lovely little brown. Is that about the size they get in here, mate? That's the average sort of size for up high in the river, like this. But how much fun are they? Oh, great fun. Beautiful looking fish. Yeah, aren't they? Look at the spots and stuff, so. He's just grabbed that royal wolf. Okay. Oh, put him in the water. Keep him in the water. You didn't play him out enough, mate. He's still going. Still lively. There we go. But there he is. A lovely brown. About, what, 500 grams or so? Yeah, if that. If that, just let him swim away and go and cause havoc. And he's off. Beautiful. With Dan taking the honours and landing the first fish of the day, I was eager to have the next cast as we spotted another trout rising up ahead. Oh. <laughs> nice. Oh, I can't get him. Oh, I reckon I dropped him. Nah, got Still him. Still on? Yeah. Good stuff. Still on. Woo nice little brownie. 
That was great. It's great when you see them ride. Oh, it's just, mate, I don't, it doesn't matter how big they are, it's just the best fun. But that's just awesome fun, like, you got to come up here and do this. So just another one, number two. And away he goes. What we're trying to do is we're trying to find some nice runs that aren't too deep. Because we're using just a, a surface, well, a dry fly, and it's just an imitative, it's not a sort of a matching the hatch type of fly, it's just a generalist sort of dry. We need to find probably a little bit more current because um, it gives the trout less time to have a good look at the fly and say, so they need to say, am I gonna take it or aren't I? And nine times out of 10, because they're hungry, they'll eat it. But these sort of pools are a bit deeper, so we're just pushing up. We need two things, shallower water and better bank access because it's pretty tough. Isn't that right, Dan? It is, it's tough going at the moment. So we're using these Royal Wolves, which are an awesome imitation of a number of different things. And probably the one key when you're dry fly fishing is to ensure that the fly stays dry up on the surface and when you cast and there's drag with rivers, the fly can get a bit waterlogged. So it's important to keep applying the gink, which is a, a fly floatant. There's a number of different ones out there. I think there's a powder as well that you can shake your fly through, but um, just keep applying a little bit of that. It's gonna keep it up. And the other thing too is just do a few false casts as well. Cause um, as it's going through the air, that's the air's gonna dry the fly a bit for you, but um, just keeping that that floating on it is going to help. Just drying the fly a bit. A few false casts. Now we'll shoot one out. It's also important when fishing a dry fly in a river that you allow the fly to have a natural drift with no drag from your fly line. So keep mending your line to stop the fly dragging through the water as any drag will look unnatural to the trout and they just won't take the fly. One of the good thing about waders is that they actually stop you from getting wet. The key ingredient to a good quality wader is that it doesn't have holes in it. Oh, nice jump. Yeah! I knew that was a fish. <laughs> I thought that had to be a fish. Right in tight against the bank. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice little brownie. Yeah. That structure definitely is where they like to hang, eh? Yeah. Beautiful. So you can just see that royal wolf 
just in the corner of his mouth. We've been plugging away here a bit and we've seen fish, but they haven't been really coming up to the dry and there was a really sort of dark run, looked like a little bit deeper water. And uh, I just thought, yeah, there's a good chance that if we get the dry right in that bubble line, which I was lucky enough to do, probably an inch off the rock, he'd come and eat it. Fair enough, he was there. There you go, he's gone. The real attraction of wading up these clear mountain streams is not about catching big fish, but it's about being in such spectacular scenery and not knowing what the next stretch of river will hold. Spiny freshwater crayfish. Oh mate, that is awesome. They're native here in the rivers. You see quite a few walking around. The white claws stand out a bit on the rocks. They look very much like a Murray cray, don't they? They are very similar, just a, a much smaller version. Oh. And um, that's a pretty big one, so they don't get the edible size or anything like that. They're protected. They're yeah. really, really interesting looking thing, aren't they? Prehistoric looking creature. It's very much like a yabby, but obviously he's got his armour. He's got some serious claws there. I'm sure he'll, uh, he'd give me a nip if I uh, put my fingers in there. I'm sure so they just hang around the rocks and just they eat do, sort of all the nymphs and yep. different yep. things? Yeah, they just feed off the bottom. I've even caught trout with remnants of them in their stomach. Ah, okay. So they, uh, no matter how spiny they are, the trout still manage to get them down yeah. somehow. And those white claws, they'd stand out, wouldn't they, on the water? They do, yeah, that's how I spotted that one. Just ah, okay, on the rock. On a rock. Put him back where he come from, eh? Yeah, mate, for sure. The thing I love about fly fishing is even though you only need one or two different flies to fish these streams, that doesn't stop me from carrying four or five hundred. Oh, that's a good drift. Yep, yep, I'm on. Yep, yep. Oh, good. Yeah, he's a nice little brownie. Nice one. Get to keep tension on him. Oh yeah. Oh, nice one, Bill. Cool. Nice little brownie. Look at the spots on it. They're so nice. Beautiful colour on that one. And they're all around about that sort of size. Yeah. And uh, as he slides off, if so, he could be say ten years old, and he won't get any bigger. That's correct. Yeah. They just grow to the the food in their environment. So. He could be one year old and that big, he could be ten years old and that big, just depends on the food source. Right, so uh, we will get the uh, fly out and get him back in the water. While it's quite easy to fish these small mountain streams with lures, I think there's no better fun than getting a lightweight fly rod, a bunch of dry flies and spending the day wading up the river catching small trout on the surface. He's got it hard where I grew. Oh. Floating paper boats down the creek. Poor little prickles out your head. I don't think we're going any further, mate. No, well, I'm definitely not going to try and climb that. So. No, no way, mate. You'd be getting uh, pretty wet if you had a crack at that one. Yep, I think we'd stand to the road. End of the road. Well, how much fun was that? Uh, you know, four nice little browns on the dry fly and a uh, bit of fun. It's a good day. It was a good day. So uh, what do you reckon? We climb out of here and go home? Um, 
I've got one more little spot up my sleeve. I think we might be able to get you onto a, a decent sized trout. A bigger trout? Yeah, I'm thinking sort of two to three pounds up. Yeah. And um, it's a slightly different way of fishing, but I think we'll catch something. Nice. Uh, so where, whereabouts is that one? Ah, uh, well that I'm not going to tell you. A oh, secret, I'll just take secret you spot. A bit of a secret spot, but um, it might surprise you what we find when we get there, but uh, you might be surprised what we catch when we get there too. Beautiful. Well, I can't refuse a secret spot, so I think we better climb out of here. There's a few stairs ahead of us, and we'll go and chase some of these bigger branch trout. Let's do it. All right, let's go. So make sure you tune in next week as Dan takes us back down the mountain to his secret spot where we chase much larger brown trout on lures. And who knows, he may even reveal where his secret spot is. Hey, I'm not telling anyone where I catch me big trout, but I'll take you there and show you. We also follow Dan as he takes a trip over to Patagonia in southern Argentina where he catches some of the most spectacular rainbow trout ever caught on film. The team at Fishing Life use only the best quality products including Eco Gear lures, Japanese technology made for Australian conditions, Trojan deep cycle batteries, angle fridge freezers and generators, Flowrite live oil systems, Daiwa rods and reels, Minn Kota electric motors and Hummingbird high definition sounders and GPS units. To find out more about these quality products log on to www.vicbrimclassics.com.au